Hey everyone, today we're taking a brief look into the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins. Firstly, GPIO stands for General Purpose Input and Output Pins. These pins allow us to communicate with other circuitry such as extension boards, sensors, custom circuits and much more. You can do some pretty amazing stuff with these pins. Now, there is a few things you should know about using the GPIO pins. If you use these pins incorrectly, it can result in bricking your Pi. Just make sure whatever you're hooking up to the pins that the Raspberry Pi can support it. If you're an owner of the Raspberry Pi and a B Plus or Pi 2, then you'll notice that the later models have more pins. Now here we have a diagram of the pins. You can get this diagram over at pymylifeup.com slash raspberry dash pi dash GPIO. These numbers refer to the physical numbering of the pins. These are easier to understand as they are in order. We'll use this method of identification later. The GPIO numbers are all over the place and a bit harder to remember them by. You'll probably need a reference board or something else to remind you what their number is. Now, as you can see on the diagram, there are more than just your standard GPIO pins. There are also some called I2C, SPI, and you are. I'll briefly mention what these all mean now. Now GPIO are your standard pins and can simply be used to turn devices on and off. For example, an LED. I2C or inter-integrated circuit pins allow you to connect and talk to hardware modules that support this protocol, the I2C protocol. Devices connecting to this would typically take up two pins. SPI or Serial Peripheral Interface Bus pins can be used to connect and talk to SPI devices. Pretty much the same as I2C but makes use of a different protocol. UART or Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter are the serial pins used to communicate with other devices. DNC stands for Do Not Connect. This is pretty self-explanatory. Do not connect anything to these pins. The power pins Pull power directly from a Raspberry Pi. GND are the pins you use to ground your devices. It doesn't matter which pin you use as these are all connected to the same line. Now all this might be daunting at first but really it's pretty easy once you get going. A lot of the abbreviations and technical jargon turn off people straight away. But once you get past this it's not that complicated. Now I will briefly touch on how to set up the pins so you can use them on the Raspberry Pi. In this example and future projects we will be using Raspbian. If you haven't got that installed then you can find out how to install it right here. If you're on the latest version of Raspbian then you can start programming and using the GPO pins straight away without needing to do any extra configuration. However, if you're going to use the SPI or I2C pins, we need to activate the modules for them first. I'll show you how to do this in a bit. However, it is recommended that you update your Pi to the latest packages. To do this, you just simply enter sudo apt get update. And now once that's done, sudo apt get upgrade. Once that is done, we can now activate the modules. Now setting up the I2C is super easy. Firstly, go to the Raspberry config tool by entering the following command, sudo raspberry config. In here, go to advanced options and then go to I2C. Turn it on. The Pi should now alert you that I2C will be enabled after reboot. It will then ask you if you would like it to be loaded by default. Select yes if you plan on using it every time the Pi boots up. Once that is done, go back to advanced options and then to SPI. Now enable it and like I2C, it it will say it will be enabled after reboot. After that it will ask you if you want it to be loaded by default. Select yes again if you plan on using it every time the Pi boots up. Now reboot the Pi. Now we want to make sure it has successfully enabled the modules. Do this enter the following command lsmod grep i2c underscore. This command will return any modules that start with i2c. It should return something like this i2c underscore bcm2708 so yep that's working correctly and now let's do it for spi lsmod grep spi underscore this command again will return any modules that starts with spi it should return something like this spi underscore bcm2835 
Now you might want to know more about a breakout kit. A breakout kit allows you to take all the pins via a ribbon cable and connect them to a breadboard. This is a lot easier and safer than working in and around the Raspberry Pi. There are quite a few different types of breakout kits you're able to buy for the Raspberry Pi. I personally prefer the T-Type as they are easier to read and use. It is really easy to connect up and once done you can switch your Pi on and you're good to start programming and using the GPO pins. Let's quickly do a small example using a simple circuit alongside a simple Python script. Python is the default programming language when it comes to working with the GPIO pins. So let's first set up our simple circuit. Now connect a ground pin to the negative rail on the side of the breadboard. Have a wire come from pin 7 down to a node further down the breadboard. And now connect an LED with a positive end facing the wire and the negative end facing away. Now connect a 100 ohm resistor from the LED to the negative rail and we're all good to go. Now let's create a script to make our LED flash. So on the Raspberry Pi enter the following command sudo nano led underscore blink dot py. Now let's write out a little program. It's really important to remember Python is white space sensitive. For example if you've got a space somewhere that it shouldn't be, Python will not like it. It will throw a syntax error. Now let's write out the code. So firstly write import rpi.gpio as gpio. Import time. Now gpio.setmode bracket gpo.board bracket. This sets the mode so the pins we are referring to are the physical pins. gpo.setup bracket 7 gpo.out. This sets pin 7 to act as an output. And now we're going to make a for loop. So firstly you write for i in range bracket 50 bracket colon. This will loop through 50 times of an exit. Now for anything inside our loop we need to enter four spaces before typing our command. So in this case it's space 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 gpio dot output bracket 7 comma true bracket. And we continue to do this for the rest. Our output true means the that GPIO pin is turned on. Output false means that pin is turned off. Time.sleep is pausing our script for one second before moving on to the next command. And then finally at the end we've got GPIO.cleanup. This allows our script to exit cleanly and prevent any unusual behavior that might happen later on. So now exit and save by pressing Control plus X and then Y. Now run our little script and the circuit should come to slide. To do this, enter sudo python led underscore blink dot py and there we have it. Now I hope this tutorial has helped introduce you to the basics of the GPIO pins. We will start to go more into depth in the future. Using these pins we'll do some pretty cool projects. If you have any feedback, projects you'd like to see done or anything else, feel free to drop us a comment below or over at pymylifeup.com. Until next time, have a good one. Looking for more Pi projects to do? Check out these 21 awesome Pi projects that anyone can do. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest projects, guides and much more.